Number three, storms cause you to make irrational choices that you would not naturally make. They make you cause irrational decisions. What are you talking about? Look at verse 11. He said unto them, what say, what, um, they said, Then they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea is wrought, and was tempestuous, or tempestuous, as Ryan said. Verse number 12. And he said unto them, Take me up. I can't read that word. I'm glad Ryan said it. Anytime I have trouble with the word, I'm having Ryan or Gabriel say that, read, that, read that, that verse in the morning, so I can get it right. And if it's not, we just guess at it, right? Verse number 12. And he said unto them, Take me up, and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Irrational decisions. Kill me. Throw me overboard. Abandon ship. Toss me out. Irrational decisions. Verse number 13. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land. They said, you know what? We're not going to do that. That's crazy. We're going to keep on trying on our way. Well, what happens in verse number 14? In verse number 14. They realize they're hopeless. They can't do it. They're trying to make it on their own. They can't do it. God's wrath is still going on. God's judgment is still being poured upon this, this on this believer. And they're all in this. They're all in this together. They're all, they're in the same storm. And they, and they say, you know what, Lord, forgive us. We're about to do something irrational here. We're about to do something that's totally crazy. We're about to do something that doesn't make any sense. Really, like what? Maybe it's nothing quite as crazy as as Abraham taking Isaac up to the mountain to, to slay him. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. That's intense. That's crazy intense, right? So no, he says, toss me overboard and the storm will cease. It's, it's for my reason that this happens. Toss. And they said, that's crazy. Well, that's last resort. And they start doing everything they can do. They're on their boat. They're trying. They're doing everything they can do. And last resort came. And they tossed him overboard and the storm ceased. Talk about a rational decision. I mean, that's the ultimate scapegoat right there, isn't it? That's the ultimate scapegoat. The church isn't growing when I toss out Jack. <laughs> Actually, that's not far-fetched. But, um, <laughs> but um, Storms will cause you to make irrational decisions, to make irrational choices that you would not naturally make. That's what storms do in our life, is it not? They make us to make irrational decisions. We do things out of impulse. Instead of trusting God, we make irrational decisions. Abraham wanted a son so bad. He was promised by God to have a son. And God didn't come on his timetable, so he jumped the gun. And he had, he had a, 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 wrong, a wrong relationship with his, with his wife's handmaiden. And Ishmael was born into the world. Ishmael was born into the world. Well, wait a second. Who is Ishmael? The arch enemy. Think about any terrorist that comes from anywhere. You know, Arab-born t- terrorists. Who do they come from? They come from that area. They come from that world. I'm saying it comes from it comes from that mentality. It comes from that idea. Ishmael. Watch out for it. Watch out for Ishmael. Watch out for them. But we we get so. We're, and then God says, "That's not the son I promised you. That's not the son I promised you. Cast him out. Whoa! Cast out my son." This is this is a son of my this is a this is a son of my this is my flesh and blood this is my child, and he says cast him out. Well, what was happening? There was a great big storm in his house. <coughs> there was a storm in the house. Ishmael was on Eli, was on Isaac. He was harassing Isaac. He was he was tormenting Isaac. Uh, Hagar Hagar was tormenting Sarah. And they were, and Sarah was tormenting Hagar and Ishmael. There was kind of a war. There was that a war. Why would you want two women in your life? Amen. I mean, bear with me. Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Had three hundred wives and seven hundred concubines. Bear with me. That's at least three hundred father-in-laws. Bear with me. Do the math. That's at least three hundred. That's at least three hundred father-in-laws. What were you thinking? Could you imagine a line in the bathroom, the palace? Could you imagine that line? I mean, give me a break, man. Could you imagine? But look, look at Can you imagine how many shoes he had to sort through to find his? Can you imagine that? <laughs> I got a space in the closet. You know, but it's a, you know, it's, but they'll make us have irrational decisions. Irrational decisions. You're going you're gonna to jump the gun on promises and make it into your own. When you try doing, when you try taking God's will and God's timing into your own hands, it messes up every time. Look, at any time a sheep tries to become a shepherd, they're a goat. That's the truth. Anytime a sheep tries to become a shepherd, they're a goat. Look at we're the sheep of his pasture. Amen. I'm not your shepherd. I said this in Sunday school. I'm not your shepherd. I'm, I'm just a sheep dog. You, you listen to the voice of the shepherd. 
Amen. He's the one you got to answer to, not me. That's the truth of that one. But storms make you make irrational decisions. They cause you to make irrational decisions. I'm going to take an innocent life that a storm stops. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? But you know what? I sure am thankful that 2,000 years ago, there's a man who volunteered, who gave up his life on the cross of Calvary, was crucified for my sake, for your sake, that would stop sin. Right. Yeah. And you want, to, you want to stop sin? It's through Jesus Christ. Right. He's the only one that's going to have it. So I'm thankful for that. But irrational decisions, does it make any sense? 